What's up everybody? Welcome to my third video on the caged chord system. In the first two videos we covered major chords and major seven chords. A lot of people know the cage system with, the, with respect to the major chords, but it's interesting how so many people don't know that you can apply it to major seven chord voicings and dominant seven chord voicings, which is what we're going to discuss today. So, don't forget to download the included tablature and fretboard grid in the description. It'll definitely help you absorb this stuff much more thoroughly to visualize it on the, on the grids as well as having the notation for reference. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we have to do, just like before, is lay out our, uh, our caged chords in open position. And in this case, we're going to be dealing with dominant seven chord shapes, all right? in the open position. So starting with C dominant 7. There's our C dominant 7 shape, right? C with our B flat added. Our A7. Right? Our G7. And just heads up on G7, we're going to end up barring it as a four string shape. We're going to visualize the full shape, just like some of the other chords in the other chord voicings, but we're only going to actually in practice play the four. All right, so there's our G7, E7, and finally our D7. The E7, we're going to do a full bar. C7 is going to be a four string shape. So C7, A7, G7, E7, and D7. All right, well, let's map these out across the fretboard, starting with C7. All right, so here we go C7, there's our root or connecting point to A7, following our caged system, right? All right, these two fingers become a half bar to make our G7 form of C7. Now we visualize our root here. We don't usually play it, but we visualize it to help us see the next form, which is E7. All right, now with E7, we find our root. We find our octave above, our root above, an octave above to find our D7 shape. All right? All right, now check this out. The next, one, the next one takes us back to C7. The way I visualize this is I take that second string note, which is the seventh in this case, and I visualize two frets up, which gives me the root, and C. And I put my first finger there, and that takes me back to C7. So I'll do that one more time. Here's the D7 shape. Two frets up. Put my first finger there. C7. See that? All right, let's move on. A7. These become a half bar to get our G7 form. We visualize our bass note. That's our connecting point for our E7. We find our root an octave higher. That's our connecting point for D7. And we take that second string note up two frets, put our first finger there. That's our C7. And we have a common bass note here for our A7. That brings us back to A7. All right, let's move on, G7. Our bass note that connects us to E7. Now we find our root an octave higher. That's our first finger now, and that's our connecting point for our D form, our D7 form. All right, that second string note up two frets. Plant down our first finger. There's our C7 form which has a common bass note with our next form, A7. All right, these two 
fingers become a half bar, bringing us home to G7. Awesome. All right. E7 is next. This is our open position E7. We find our octave root and put our first finger there to get our D7. That second string note is the seventh. Up two frets, it becomes the root. Plant our first finger there. There's our C7 shape for E7. All right. Here's our bass note. It's in common with the next form, A7. All right. These two fingers become a half bar. It gives us our G7 shape. We visualize our bass note to take us back home. E7. All right. One more, D7. There's our seventh on the second string, up two frets. There's our root that lets us create our C7 form of D7. Here's our bass note. It's in common with the next form. A7 form of D, dominant seven, right? All right, these two fingers become a half bar. There's our G7 form for D7. Visualize our bass note there. That's our connecting point for E7. All right. We find our root an octave higher. That's our first finger now. That brings us home to D7. All right, I went kind of quickly there. But you do have the PDF that will help you go through this. And obviously, you can go through the video a little part at a time. And I would. I'd take my time and really absorb this. This stuff is so useful. I mean, Cage was a big deal when I discovered it. And I, I could see how the fretboard was connected with our you know, standard tuning. But then when I saw that I could do major sevens and dominant sevens, well, obviously, that just tripled my ability to use it, right? You can also superimpose your knowledge of pentatonic and diatonic scales. There's five fingerings in the traditional fingerings of those two scales, and they interconnect totally with the five caged shapes. And that'll be some discussion for some future videos. So, thanks for listening. I'm Daryl Dominguez. I hope you're filling in the gaps of your knowledge so you can play better guitar, play better music. I appreciate you being here. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in there. If you've been learning something, if you've been getting some value from these videos, please subscribe. Please hit the bell, all that good stuff. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right? Thanks again.